Hi, I'm Ann Cusack, a psychologist at the UCSD Eating Disorders Clinic. And I'm Leslie Anderson. I'm also a psychologist at the UCSD Eating Disorders Clinic. And today, the skill that we're going to focus on, as usual, is from the DBT Skills Manual by Marsha Linehan. And we're going to be talking about accumulating positive emotions, which is part of the emotion regulation section. It might be helpful for you all at home to grab a pen and paper um, so that you can write down a couple things that might be helpful for you to do to accumulate the positives um, while you are socially distancing and staying at home during this global pandemic. And the thing about accumulating the positives is that we all have plenty of negative emotions floating around right now. We all have anxiety and fear and boredom and maybe some frustration with the way that other people are handling things in the pandemic. And so it's a little bit of this bank account where you need to make sure that you have enough positive emotions that the negative ones aren't completely taking over your life. And so the way that you put more positive emotions in the bank is by being really deliberate about it and not waiting for them to be caused by other things, but making sure that you're creating those positive experiences and then those positive emotions um, on your own. The way that I sort of think about it like a goofy metaphor is that like everything that you do intentionally to accumulate a positive emotion is like adding a piece of armor to your like suit of armor and that it doesn't mean that if like you know uncomfortable or bad things happen in your life that it won't hurt it will just hurt a lot less right if you have no armor and you get knocked off that horse it's really gonna feel bad mm -hmm. if you have some armor and you get knocked off that horse it's gonna feel a little less bad and if you're like fully suited you're still gonna feel it and you're gonna probably come out a lot less unscathed. And we're pretty much all getting knocked off that horse right now. All so the time. we yeah. all really need this. So, you know, there is a list in the DBT skills manual of types of pleasant events or activities that you can do. There's 225 of them mm -hmm. on the list. There's handy little check boxes so you can check them off. And a lot of them, frankly, you can't do right now because of the situation in the world and you know all the stay at home and social distancing orders. So what I want you all thinking about is which ones can you do at home? So which ones can you write down on your list and have, I actually have a list of things um, that are my sort of what I wanna do at home um, when I have free time. And it's so key for me to have a list because Sometimes when I'm just sitting around thinking about what I want to do, I can't think of anything. Whereas, you know, throughout the day, I'm hearing about different ideas and getting different suggestions from people. So having that sort of working list that you're adding to all the time and you can refer back to whenever you have some downtime is a really good idea. So I want to go through the list and think about, well, which ones might be good for people to do at home. And as usual, this is really unique and individual to you. It's whatever of the things on this list would be pleasant for you. So the first one on the list is working on my car. That one's not pleasant for me, but if it is for you, then by all means, go for it. I will say that I used to think this wasn't pleasant for me either, and then I waxed my own car for the first time during this time, and it was like really kind of fun, and like I felt very, you know, skillful. I love that, and you know, you built some mastery at the same time because then you have this beautiful, shiny car. So what kinds of pleasant events have you been doing at home during all this other than waxing your car? Um, lots of like having a quiet evening and sort of reveling in it. So doing something like lighting a candle, reading a book. Um, I started, I've started some new shows that I have never, um, watched before. And also just trying to do things that really connect me with the people that I love most. Mm -hmm. So, um, like really doing things and thinking of ways to connect to my family who are across the country and things like that. So like Zoom get together. Yes. Yes. I've been doing house those party. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those things. Yep. I've been doing more online games. So mm -hmm. I'm really a sucker for online Scrabble. I think I have like Scrabble games going with, you know, eight or nine people who I would normally be seeing in person and I'm not unfortunately, but Hey, at are least you I usually play Scrabble with them? Are you usually playing Scrabble with them in person? Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's not completely outside of the norm, but like who has time for that normally? So this is a silver lining for me is okay. that I have time for these online Scrabble games with people. There we go. And, um, you know, there's, I think, uh, another one that's been really big for me is organizing certain areas of my house. And it's not that I like love organizing and at the same time, I love the effect of organizing. So, you know, really taking the time to get rid of some old things and, make spaces in my house look a little bit prettier and more soothing has been really helpful for me. And, um, you know, doing projects with my kids. So we've been doing all sorts of different projects. We, um, we've been learning a lot about making slime. We've been doing homemade Play-Doh. We've been doing some baking together. 
And um, I don't know if it's funnier to imagine you baking or making a slime. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's she's laughing because baking is just normally not my jam, but it's like whatever you got to do to like create these pleasant moments with your kids. Um, we've been going on lots of walks together. I've been teaching my younger one how to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just thinking about things that you can do that um, are going to form a sense of connection and be pleasant uh, during this crazy time. I'm trying to think if there's some other really good ones on this list. There's some on here that are more like individual as well. Like if you need to have some pleasant events and you are finding yourself, you know, without family around or alone, even things just like thinking to yourself, like I'm an okay person, taking yourself for a drive, having like a one person dance party. I have a really close friend who said that he just put on his headphones um, alone in his house and just fully rocked out, like had a dance party all by himself. And he was like, it was so fun. So there's a bunch of these things that you can do. And like Leslie said, that are more personal to you that might be um, really helpful ways to just sort of accumulate some pleasant events in your day. We've been doing lots of extra art projects. We've been making friendship bracelets and um, doing some embroidery stuff. Um, learning to sew masks is always a good one in this time. I actually hand stitched masks, which is new for me since I'm not really a seamstress of any sort. That is amazing. And it was like pretty pleasant because then not only did I do something I'd never done before and felt sort of accomplished, but I also knew I was like contributing to people mm -hmm. who needed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taught my kids how to play cards. So now I have automatic uh, rummy and gin rummy playing card partners. That's nice. been pretty fun. Mm -hmm. So there's 225 things on this list and we would just really encourage you to go through and jot down the ones that oh. might be enjoyable to you and um, keep that by your side or in your phone or whatever so that you are continuing to create those pleasant experiences for yourself from home. And then what's really important too is making sure that you're actually being mindful of that pleasant activity while you're doing it. Because for me, it's always a challenge to think, uh, to like get distracted while I'm doing something fun and think about the things that I should be doing instead or think about the fact that the pleasant activity isn't gonna last that long. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important to stay completely mindful of that activity while you're doing it. That's really a key to this whole thing. Um, so that is accumulating the positives. And we hope that you're managing to accumulate lots of positives even though they're, um, this is a really hard time. And we'll be back with more skills coming your way soon.